Hello there guys, welcome back to Union Stalks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, we've done it, we are in the semi-finals of the Champions League, this is huge, this is absolutely huge, because look at it, right, we haven't said that in seven years, yeah, seven years, and despite the scoreline you can see on the screen right now, which is crazy, because you know, as much as I thought Porto were going to come at us and really try and take the game to us, I don't feel I don't feel like they did that enough. I, I feel like they really were quite secluded in their own ways. I felt like they weren't brave enough. It was only in the last maybe 15, 10, 10, 15 minutes where you saw them really starting to up the urgency a little bit, where they should have done that all game because they were chasing two goals. And in the last minute, they got a goal and a very, very good one. So fair play to them. But I don't feel like we were threatened that much. And for most of that game, we had it in control. So even though we lost 1-0, we still put on a very good defensive performance. It was a defensive performance. It was Chelsea of old. You know, it's still in our DNA. And it's good to see that we still got it in our bloodstream. That we can, you know, really, really defend and claw out a result without having the ball. And not rely on having possession, not rely on dominating the game, but rely on just not letting anyone through and getting the result you need. And it's nice to know we we can still do that. Tonight, we done just that. Albeit, should we have put some chances away? You could have said that. Although many of them weren't clear cut, but we did have a couple of opportunities where we really could have threatened their goalkeeper and possibly get a goal or two. But even towards the end, it looked like it was going to finish 0 0. Finishes 1 0 Porto, but it's still enough. We go through on um, aggregate, on away goals, because we got two away goals. Porto with the only one. We win 2 1 on aggregate. Chelsea are through to the semi-finals of the Champions League. It's been so flipping long. I just, I can't fathom. You know, it baffles me. In December, yeah, in December, where we were losing games left, right and centre. And we just thought, what on earth is going on? And we were losing to Wolves and we'd lost to Everton and we lost to Arsenal. We lost to City. We lost to Leicester. And we were just losing all these games. And if you had told me then... Chelsea would be in a Champions League semi-final, I'd punch you in the face, yeah? I'd take that as an insult. I'd take that like, are you trying to mug me off, right? <laughs> it's as simple as that, but here we are. And it's all because of one man that's walked into the club and transformed everything, Thomas Tuchel. We have to owe this to Thomas Tuchel. We find ourselves in the last four of the Champions League, and you know what? If you haven't heard... Bayern Munich have been knocked out. Yes, PSG have made it through. So, you know, it, it, it could end up becoming one of those situations where we have our manager facing his old team in the final. It could be, but we'll see who we face in the semis. Is it going to be Real Madrid? Is it going to be Liverpool? We'll find out tomorrow. In relation to this game, let's take a look at the starting lineup and what Thomas Tuchel decided to go with because um, the front three... I predicted to be the same, and it sure as hell was the same. And in terms of the entire lineup, I think I got it right in my preview, except for one. Let's go through it. Mendy in goal, Aspilicueta, Thiago Silva, and Rudiger as the back three. We had Reese James at right wing back, Chilwell at left wing back, Jorginho and Kante as the two central defensive midfielders or midfielders in the double pivot. We had Mason Mount. Havertz and Pulisic up top, the front three, Chile B at left wing back, but the front three unchanged. And, you know, in terms of the game against Crystal Palace, we seen that we had that front three that were lethal. And I did say in my preview that, you know what, it'd be good to stick with them to try and see if we can keep that going. Keep that, that chemistry going, keep that bond, because why try and fix something that's not broken? And I feel like in the circumstance of the game today, they were providing a lot of energy. They were providing a lot of intensity in terms of really trying to cause hassle amongst Porto's back line. And they did that on and off the ball. But Porto were quite well set up in terms of defence. I just feel like they weren't very set up in terms of going forward. And alongside that, defensively, Chelsea were absolutely superb for about what 92 minutes we were superb and then we let in a goal but in terms of the 92 minutes before they'd scored I thought you know what we were very solid we were compact we contained very well um we just cut off every single opportunity in every single lane and every single avenue that Porto could go down to try and score 
we cut it off. We cut it off and just did not allow them to do anything. To the point where even in the second half, let alone the first half, even in the first half, I was starting to say, you know what? It looks like Porto are running out of ideas. It looks like they don't really have a plan. They're just trying to blag it. They're trying to, you know, bluff their way through here because we've just cut everything off. And for us, we're in a good situation. It's up to Porto. If you want it that much, come and get it. We don't need to do anything. We can defend and sit here all night. Not a problem. We're tuning up, you know? So... That's where I was looking at Porto. And I couldn't really see anything. To, to Even towards the second half, I wasn't threatened. And now, you know, in terms of the substitutions, you could say that maybe Thomas Tuchel should have brought on a couple of players earlier because he did wait a long time before making a sub. Porto had already made four subs, if I'm not mistaken, by the time we'd made our first. Um, you know, we didn't, we didn't decide to change anything. We brought on Giroud. Um, eventually, we brought on Ziyech. That was it. You know, and both of them came on very late, very late. So I would have probably taken off Pulisic. He was getting absolutely clamped. Pulisic, I think, got fouled about 39 times. You know, um, that's exaggerated, probably. But it's probably close. I'm not lying. Um, I'm just guessing. Probably about 39. He was getting absolutely tackled left, right, center, upstairs, downstairs, everywhere. Um, so I hope he's okay. I know he's made out of cheese, so I hope he's okay. <laughs> and I hope he's not hes not hurt. He'll probably wake up sore tomorrow. But um, I just had Manchester City in mind. You know, in the last 10 minutes, the last 15 minutes, even before that, I was starting to think, you know what? If there's some players that are getting tired, take them off. Take them off because we have this result in the bag so far, the way it's looking. And we can keep an eye on Manchester City in the FA Cup semi-final, which is going to be huge for us, you know. If we get past Manchester City, I think it's safe to say we're going to win the FA Cup. That's just, you know, how it's looking. And the same goes for City. If they knock us out, they're probably going to go and win the FA Cup. So it's a big game. That's why I was looking at it and I thought, you know what, bring on Timo Werner. He's got the speed, the intensity, perhaps, to get in the round. That would be good. Porto attacking, really playing a bit of a high line. I think there's something that can be done there with Timo Werner and possibly going around. We, did, we didn't decide to do that. I thought Ziyech could come on and replace Pulisic because Pulisic was getting bullied, you know, in a good way. In a good way. He wasn't getting bullied in terms of him doing nothing. He was getting tackled, as I said, left, right and centre. So he took some punishment tonight. And I felt like if Ziyech had come on a bit earlier, maybe he could have had a contribution to something. Alongside that, though, look, everyone I thought played their part. I thought Edouard Mendy done very well. He couldn't do anything about the goal. The goal was the goal. The goal was something that you'd see from Ronaldo, Gareth Bale. You know, those sort of goals we saw in the past, that goal was on par. Great ball into the box. He just overhead kick it into... Not even overhead kick. Overhead shin. He hit it with his shin. And it went flying into the top corner. So look, one of them goals that happens. Um, but the entire defence, Edouard Mendy, fantastic. Aspilicueta... Just superb. Silva done a great job. Rudiger done, done a great job. Reese James defensively was absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Did not let anything through. No Corona, no nothing. Yeah. Because <laughs> I know Porto have a player called Corona. Reese James had Corona contained. So if you are looking to try and solve any Corona issues, call Reese James. He will sort it out for you. You don't need social distancing. You need Reese James. Um, but honestly, yeah, Reese James, absolutely super. Chilwell, you could say, um, had a very good game. Albeit, there were a couple of moments there where he was caught out, I would say defensively. But I think on, on the overall, he had a very good game. Was contributing very, very well going forward. And I feel like, you know what? There were a couple of chances there, especially in the first half, where if Kante had really kept his, his head up and looked left and right to see what the vision would have brought him, he probably would have seen that Chilwell was available and unmarked and would have scored. Um, so, yeah, you know, talking about Kante, I think Kante in that first half had those couple of glimpses of mistakes, but overall had a very, very good game. Kante, especially with his interceptions, he was not letting anyone through. Anyone through. And the same could be said for Jorginho. Together, defensively, they were superb. Absolutely superb. I think the one thing we lacked, though, we could have done with Kovacic on the pitch. Kovacic on the pitch would have been able to take the ball and really drive and run with it, you know, and um, really pose that counter-attacking threat, which I felt like at times is what we, we lacked. You know, we really could have taken the game to Porto on the counter-attack 
And the times that we had, I feel like we could have gotten there faster if we had had Mateo Kovacic in the midfield. But anyway, it's not the end of the world. As I said, we had two goals advantage of Porto in that first half and in that second half, at least towards the end. So we had the game in our favour. The front three, Mason, Mount, Pulisic, Havertz, I think they all done very well in terms of the job that I think that they were set out to do. You know, they didn't score. They didn't really threaten the goalkeeper that much, but they made life hard for Porto to work the ball out the back. And you saw Porto go long a lot of times and a couple of times making it through. But I feel like for the 90 minutes that we played against Porto, we contained very well. And that started from the front with Kai Havertz, Pulisic and Mason Mount. So in terms of how Thomas Tuchel set the team out today, I feel like it was a job well done. I feel like it wasn't a game where we were looking to keep possession of the ball. It was a game where we just had to defend well. And we defended well. At least up until the last minute where we knew that's it. We've got it. We're It's in the bag. We're getting to the semi-final. And then Porto scored. But too little too late, basically. Too little too late. Chelsea are now in the semi-finals of the Champions League. This is what I'm saying, guys. You know? And I said it on the watch along. I said, tune into the match review because I'm going to say something which is a little bit in depth. And I, I want to say it on the review. So here it is. We can go all the way. We can go all the way. I heard a comment on commentary from BT Sport that sent a chill up my spine. It sent a chill up my spine. They showed the banner of um, the Chelsea flag in, in the stadium that was there today. Chelsea, Pride of London. And it showed, it panned to that, to that flag and the commentator went, there it is, Chelsea, Pride of London. But by the end of May, it could be the Pride of Europe. And it just set into me that, you know what, even others are possibly starting to believe that this could be the year where we do it again. So look, we'll see what happens. I am absolutely buzzing. I can't get the smile off my face. It's as simple as that. We'll see who we face tomorrow when we watch Real Madrid versus Liverpool. Unfortunately, I will not be doing a watch long for tomorrow albeit because of fasting and the way that it clashes right now in terms of me having to really eat and get myself together. You saw that on the watch long, but there was no way I was, I was missing tonight. No way. So going into the semi-finals, I will be doing watch longs for that. Chelsea and non-Chelsea for sure. But um, yeah, we'll see who we face tomorrow, Real Madrid or Liverpool. Bring both of them on as far as I'm concerned. But it's about to get interesting. And I think when we play that semi-final, it's going to be the most nerve-wracking game. I think we Chelsea fans are about to go through or have gone through in the last seven years, you know, albeit winning the title, possibly on par. But apart from that, we haven't been in this situation since 2014. So bring it on because I can't wait. I can't wait. Let me know what all of you think in the comment section below. How do all of you see that game? Do, are you happy with the performance? Um, are you happy with Tuchel, cool, the way we set up? Are you pumped? Do you feel like we can play against anyone, Real Madrid or Liverpool? Who would you rather prefer in the semi-final? And your thoughts on PSG knocking Bayern Munich out. Do you think if we were to make the final, we'd be playing against PSG? Or have you got other ideas? Let me know. I'd love to hear it in the comment section. Thank you all so much um, to everyone that has subscribed. To everyone that watched the watch along and subscribed whilst on the watch along. Much appreciated. If you are new and you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash the like button if you did enjoy this video. Much appreciated. And one final thing to thank all of you for. Thank you for allowing me to hit 63,000 subscribers. I've hit 63,000 onwards and upwards, <laughs> road to 70, and then the road to 100k. Fingers crossed we make it soon, but thank you all so much. Without all of you, it wouldn't be possible. So I want to say thank you again. I'll see all of you tomorrow for a brand new video. Thank you all so much. Have a good one. Look after yourselves. Take care and peace.